Good morning, everyone. The topic of my presentation is a new self-constrained information method. And uh, the self-constrained information is extracted from the results based on the probability tomography. Uh, here is the outline of the pre presentation. It includes the introduction and the new method, synthetic examples, field examples, and the c conclusions. Mm, here we will introduce the 3D inversion method first. Mm, this method is proposed by the Lee and Oldenburg in 1996 and 1998. The uh, the final objective function consists of two terms, the data misfit and uh, the model objective function. And uh, these two terms is balanced by the regular regularization param parameter, the mu. And the model objective function can be explicated as this norms, this, this form. And uh, we can use the uh, reference model and the special winning functions to control the structures uh, that we will recover. And this is, uh, if we didn't add, uh, add any information or the constraints, uh, and we use the L curve method to find the, uh, the most uh, optimal regularization parameter. And the uh, uh, left figure shows the model, and the right figure shows the general, general information, information results. And we can see that the result cannot, don't have a clear border, and uh, the recovered susceptibility don't have, is, uh, is lower than the real models. So if we want to if we want to get a more uh, optimal result, we should uh, add more constraints. Mm, usually, just apply information uh, is usually extracted from the geological information or geophysical information, or geologists, and so on. Uh, and this information is uh, all from the external, external information. And if we don't have this information, how can uh, how can we improve the quality of the inversion result? Mm, quality at all in 2013 mm, gave the concept of the self-constrained inversion, uh, which used the uh, applied information self-extracted from the potential fields. Uh, this, this information usually be the position of the source edges the deep of the edges of sources, depth to the top, and so on. And uh, they, use the, they use these information as a constraints into a two-dimension uh, deep in fault model and get a very, a very nice result. Mm, but these this parameters may be difficult to describe a 3D source body. So we will introduce a a new method to extract this information. It's a prob probability tomography. Uh, this method is also an imaging method, but uh, and this can describe the uh, pro approximate distribution of the source, but cannot give us the physical property. Mm. Uh, we also use the model as an example and the middle figure is the total field magnetic anomaly uh, caused by the, no, by the model. And uh, the right figure is the uh, uh, probability tomography of the uh, TMA. And we can see that uh, the result of the, P, the PT result can describe the uh, source, but uh, not exactly. And then we uh, try to use uh, uh, gradients of the TMA to do this work. As we know, the gradients had includes more information and has a higher resolution than the TMA. And uh, these characteristics also show the in their probability tomography results. And for example, the, the prob 
ability tomography of the uh, grains in the of grains of the TMA in the northern direction has a clear border in this in in this direction, but not in the uh, eastern direction. Uh, so we try to combine these three results into one result by selecting the uh, minimum of the three results in the middle figure at each grade and uh, as the final result we call the combined probability tomography and uh, it is it, uh, compared with the uh, compared with the probability tomography of the TMA it has a, a clear border of the south of the south body and we use the lipolysing operator at each layer in the depth direction uh, to find the south body in 3D dimension. And uh, we can use the uh, uh, south body's edge we, we detected to uh, as the string or the strings in the inversion. Here is the flow map of the new method. If we didn't, we first we have the observed data and we also use the TMA as an example. If we didn't add any uh, constraints, we can call the inversion the general inversion. And then if we want to get the self-constraint information based on the probability tomography, and the firstly we should get uh, the gradients of the TMA in three directions. And then we use the probability tomography to process these gradients and uh, get the final combined result and uh, to detect the source edge. And uh, then we should uh, uh, transfer this edge emission information to uh, different spatial weighting functions and then inversion our result. Mm, here we use the method to uh, the synthetic examples. And in the model one, we use the cube uh, source body and uh, compare, the, compare the, the, with the general inversion, the self-constrained inversion result has a clear border and uh, is the recovered susceptibility. Okay, thank you. And, uh, and the recovered susceptibility is uh, more close to the real model. And uh, the model two is a dipping, dipping model. Uh, it also shows a high resolution in the north direction and the, the eastern direction. And also it has a more clearly deeper, deeper information in the result. And then we use this method in uh, our study error as a field example. Uh, so the study error is the Tishan Metallogenic belt in Dai, located in Hubei, China. And uh, the left figure is the simplified geology map and based on the Li and Li in 2014. And uh, the right figure, figure A, is the TMA and TMA in, this, uh, in the study area. And we can see that the uh, high values in, this, uh, in the anomaly contour shows a well correlation with the covered or body in the geology map. And the figure B, C, and D are the three gradients of the TMA in the, in the north, north and the, in the north, east, and the depth direction respectively. And we use these three gradients to uh, get a combined uh, probability tomography, and this shows the result uh, uh, slices through depths at uh, 550 meters and in the profile A, B, and C. And then we extracted the edges from the, the PD results in the, in the left. And we use the uh, uh, edges information to constrain our inversion results. And the left finger is the self constrained inversion, and the right is the general inversion. We, we can find that if we use the 
self-constrained information, and the results are more concentrated and uh, have a um, colored border and uh, show more characteristics. And then it's current. Uh, we can find that the combined uh, pro probability tomography of TM8 gradients can describe the age of the salt body more exactly. And the self-constrained erosion results um, based on the combined uh, probability tomographies of the TM8 gradients are more concentrated and uh, have a higher resolution than the general erosion without a self-constraint. Okay, thanks all, thanks for your attention. Okay. Uh, pardon? the definition of self-constrained information. So, I mean, so this is, um, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I don't know if you want to go, go into that. Yeah, yeah, you have the reference there. Thank you. Okay, okay. Well, I have a quick question. Okay. Um, your model results are quite beautiful. Did you yes. put um, error in there? It error? Did you um, put some estimated error in your uh, synthetic inversion? No. No? Uh, yes. okay. okay. Thank you so much. <coughs> yeah.